Do you like geometric progression? I'm sure you do. But the sum formula is often complex. It looks complex to a lot of my students and they don't remember it at once. So I'm going to show you how the formula is actually derived. And I just hope that you will remember this formula to find the sum of any geometric series. So you know that series as in when I'll keep the terms in the summation form or I keep them in addition form. So in a geometric progression, the first term is always A. The second term is always obtained by multiplying a fixed value R to the first term. And we keep on multiplying that value. So a r squared, a r cubed, and it goes on. Yeah, where every last term can be represented as a times r to the power of n minus 1. Because I'm keeping them in addition form, I'll say this is equivalent to sn sum. Okay, now there is one important thing that we do here is we'll multiply this by r. We'll multiply by r both sides. So why am I doing it? Because if I'll do so, each of my term is now multiplied with the value of r that many times as the position that I'm in. If I have to reach the third term, I'll be multiplying the r value three times. So if I'll keep on doing that, to reach the ultimate term, I would do a times r to the power n, right? I just copied the same series once again from the top. The reason I did it is because I want to subtract the two equations. Why are we subtracting now? If you'll subtract, then you will be getting rid of the common term. And you see there are common terms present. a r and a r will cancel out upon subtracting. Yeah, every term will cancel out like this. See, everything will cancel out a r to the power of n minus 1, obviously it will be here so it will cancel out somewhere thereby subtracting on the left side I have rsn minus sn should be equal to I have just one term rem remaining in the first equation a r to the power of n and I have just the first term remaining because these are the only two terms that did not get cancelled out so now because sum is what we are trying to find and this can be factorized out r minus 1 should be equal to a is a common factor again pick it out r to the power of n minus 1 so the, finally the sum formula is now very simple first term multiplied with the value of r to the power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 isn't it simple it's very simple because the logic is you first term and the last term was left out when I took the two equations and this r minus 1 hence we obtain it likewise so remember one thing very important if the value of r is less than 1 the formula itself is now reversed in a way that instead of not subtracting uh, the second equation with the first we'll just reverse the manner or we will reverse the order of subtraction. So nothing changes. It's just that because we were raising power to the number less than 1, we want to keep that term at the back of 1 and then we just do 1 minus r. Okay, so this is for the value of r. No matter what sign it is, the value has to be less than 1 and here the value has to be greater than 1. Very simple.